In this coding exercise, we have what I think is a very practical kind of problem to figure out. And that is that we need to be able to take a series of objects, and you could imagine that this could be something such as a database query or something like that. And that's part of the reason why I like this exercise is because it's mimicking what you would do, say, in a Ruby on Rails application where you ran a database query for invoices. So instead of just dealing with a regular array or some more abstract kind of data type, you're dealing with real objects in real data. Right here we have invoices that are for Google, Facebook, and LinkedIn, and they have a title, which is the name of the customer, followed by what the total was, and then also a category. And what we need to do is we need to build an invoice filter that can go and it can find and split up, up items based on a certain value. So as you can see in the description, what we need to do is we need to create two different arrays with one array containing all of the items that are over $300. So anytime the total is over 300, we want all of those items in one array. And if it's under that, then we want them in another array. And as you can see right here, what we should do is we should have two items that are in the over 300 array, the one for Google and Facebook, and then one, the LinkedIn one, that is under that coming down to their expectation. You can also see that we have a method here called invoice filter, takes in the invoices, and then it looks for two array items. So what we should expect our method to return is actually an array of arrays because the first item we're looking for are all the items that are over 500, and the second array is going to be all of the items that are under that. So now with all that in mind, let's kind of walk through what the best approach to this is going to be. We know that we have a few requirements. First and foremost, we know that we have to build this method. So I'm going to build in invoice filter, and it's going to take a set of invoices. Now these invoices, as you can tell just based off of the test example, this is going to be an array of structs. So this is very, very similar to what you would see if you're running a database query, which is why I did it. I wanted to make it as close to reality as possible. So now that we have that, we know we're going to need to call our invoices to access that data. And we also need to pull out and extract only the total, because that's what we're dealing with. So I'm going to call the map method. And using the ampersand syntax, I'm going to say that I only want to grab the totals. So will this work? Let's kind of take a base case example. If I come here and if I select all of these items here, let's come down and I'm going to paste all these in. And let's call and see exactly what we have with our invoice filter right now. So if I paste in or if I say that I want this to process invoices, what does it do when we're just calling invoices.map and passing in total? Coming down, you can see that this has done the first step of what we need. So this has went through the collection and it extracted each one of the totals, 500, 1,000, and 200. Now remember, we don't care about the title or the category. The only reason I put those in the test data is because I wanted to be able to implement this first step and show you how you can extract only a certain specific set of items, a way that you could also do this if you're pulling data in from a file or from an API, something like that. So with that in place, we have our items, but how can we actually split this up and use a filter? Remember, our filter needs to be that we want our first array to contain all of the invoices that are over 500 and anything else should be in another array. Well, we could build a, now that we have our invoices as an array, we could build some type of conditional and say that we're going to do something like this where we create a final array and 
then from here we know that we have our cleaned up totals. So we have totals and then from this point we could build a conditional and we could say yeah totals dot each do total and then we could pipe start to pipe in our totals based off of some type of conditional and so we could say if total is greater than 300 then do something and uh, we could just keep building it out but I don't really like that solution and there's a few reasons why one we would have a lot of code that really be unnecessary. Uh, this is part of the reason why functional programming and understanding how functional programming works is so important because with that you would almost be writing code the same way as if you were writing say PHP code or something and it's more procedural in nature. What we want to do is actually use functional calls meaning that our methods are going to be able to take options and then those options can go and pass messages to our data and then it can extract and perform the behavior that we're intending. So the method I'm going to call is a Ruby method called partition and as you may have expected it takes a block so I'm going to put in the letter I for a block variable and then I can say I greater than 300. So what exactly does this do? Well partition takes any array collection and then inside of the block it's going to go through and based off of just a conditional. So in this case it's going to say every time that an element is greater than 300 it is going to put that inside of the left array. So partition returns two arrays one array, the first array, is any element that returns true inside the block. So in this case, any time i is greater than 300. In the right array, or the second array, is going to be any of the items where this returns false. It's really that basic. So what this is going to do with our test data right here is when it finds Google it's going to look at that total it's going to say okay I in this case 500 is greater than 300 so this is going to be true it's going to put it in the left array then it's going to come to the Facebook which is at a thousand that is also greater than 300 so it's going to put it in the left array then it's going to come to LinkedIn that is under 300 so it is going to put it in the right array. So now if I save this file and run the code our, at the very bottom you can see that this works perfectly. We now have one array that has two array elements. The first contains 500 and 1000 and the second contains 200 which is exactly what we're looking for if you look here on line 16 and then on line 17 with our test expectations. So let's come and try to run this test. So I'm going to say RSpec February 27th and now if I run this you can see we have one example and no failure. So this is working very nicely. And don't worry about those warnings where it says uninitialized constant. That's because right here we have a, uh, I duplicated the struct items, but we can get rid of all of that anyway. That's not gonna be in the final solution. That was just our test data, but this is working. So to review, we implemented a number of functional items in order to build our invoice filter. First, we mapped over the data and we extracted out the total attribute from our array of structs. Then with that in place, then we called the partition method. We passed it a block and we said that we wanted to pass any items over 300 into the left array and anything under would go in the right. So that is working perfectly and you now know how to leverage the map and the partition method in order to build a filter.